Hey guys, I'm back. It's your girl, Rosalyn, and I am back from my trip to Jamaica. And uh, boy, was that a trip. <laughs> uh, it was a very exciting trip. I learned tons. Um, and I just, I took notes. And uh, right now, um, I'm just kind of organizing those notes and thoughts in my in my mind, trying to get it organized. And uh, so, um, but I'm back and I wanted to come on here and uh, just answer a couple of questions. Uh, one of the questions that I had was, how did I find the places to stay? Um, so, uh, I stayed at a couple of villas and also in a studio apartment for, uh, the span of two weeks. And I found those on booking.com. Uh, the first place, uh, was, uh, Mo Bay Villa. Uh, the owner's name is Wayne. And uh, he owns his own villa. Uh, he rents out rooms, uh, so it's an operation. It's an operational business, and uh, but it is his home, and uh, so yeah. And he's uh, you know doing some work on the property, expanding, putting in a swimming pool. So he's uh, continuing to um, progress as far as, uh, you know, completing his dream. Uh, also, the second one was Choose to be Happy. And that was in Kingston. And that owner's name was Sheldon James. And that studio apartment was awesome. I mean, I had air conditioning. I had uh, hot water. I had my own TV, a king-size bed, um, room service. My own refrigerator, stove, kitchen. Uh, it was nice. And I had my own driver. And the first one, too, at Villa Mo Bay, he, went, he came and picked me up at the airport. His name was Wayne, the owner of the property. He came and picked me up from the airport, a courtesy pickup, and took me to, uh, straight to the villa. And he also was my driver throughout the five days that I was there, running me to, taking me to the grocery store so I could do some comparison shopping um, and shopping, grocery shopping, uh, so that um, my Rasta chef could cook for me. And, uh, and so... He had staff there. He had uh, other people that was working on the property. This was all at Villa Mo Bay. I, 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 I'm kind of bouncing around, but um, so anyway, the second uh, accommodation was choose to be happy. I had my own driver. Uh, he came to uh, pick me up. Uh, to take me to uh, a restaurant so I could get some jerk chicken. And uh, so, and then he came and took me to the zoo. And also he came and took me, where else did he take me? I think that was it. Took me to the zoo. Um, he did take me to Emancipation Park as well, but I didn't get a chance to video that, videotape that. 
Um, and then he came and took me back to the bus station so that I could um, go to my third destination, which was in the grill at uh, R and V Villa. Uh, the owners were Richard and Valeria. There was their husband and wife team. They have children, so um, so they the children were running around and playing. So that was it was pretty inviting and. And uh, and nice to see that a you know a working couple with children um, doing their thing and making it happen. So um, so yeah, so all three of these, uh, and then also I had a driver too. Uh, Richard has they have their own driver, and that driver came and took me to. Um, he took me and the couple next door because the couple next door was also visiting from the United States. And um, so we were just up and down the strip, going to different restaurants. Uh, he also took me around to look at some of the housing in the area. Um so, and he was a wealth of information as far as um, uh, where I could get more information about either renting or purchasing. And I think, you know, the at first I was think t I was moving toward renting, but I think I may just go ahead and purchase a piece of property because, um, I think I can, it's because I think it's doable. Um, there is this place called National Housing Trust that the driver told me about, and I called them, and they gave me a little bit of information and told me uh, how I could contribute to the trust fund. Uh, that way, when I move, and... Um, and that's, then this is me voluntarily contributing to this fund so that a year after I move there, which is then I would be eligible to purchase property and they would be of assistance and how I'm not sure, but, um, but I think I can use them as a resource. Um, Um, and so, yeah, so, uh, these were the three villas that I stayed in. Um, my favorite one was, well, they were all great in their own right, you know, so the grill was perfect just because of the location, uh, the backyard or the additional space, um, was, just perfect, tranquil, coconut trees everywhere, uh, pear trees or avocado trees, uh, ackee tree, mango trees. There was a pond on the property. There was a restaurant on the property. And, uh, and my next door neighbors for the five days were also uh, company for me. So we did things together. And so, so yeah, that was my, so that was, that was my favorite in its own right. The first property um, was also uh, my favorite because uh, although, although there wasn't much to do, um, I was still able to get out and maneuver around in the city. Um, and I had an ocean view from uh, that property in, in Montego Bay. 
and it was tranquil as well. Uh, after my flight from the States to Jamaica, I was really jet lag. So for the first two to three days, I did nothing but just basically lounge around and sit out on the porch and or the veranda. And um, I just soaked in the beauty and the breeze of Jamaica. I kept company with uh, Wayne because, you know, since he's the owner there and he was in and out, and so I saw him quite frequently. So he shared some things with me about um, his experience as far as um, him turning his property into a business. And so that somewhat inspired me. And also having a chef there on property, which was able to cook for me. So I didn't have to cook at all. Um, and... Uh, and the Rasta was a, he was the security guard too, so. But uh, yeah, so, but he had workers in and out working on the plumbing, working on the swimming pool and, you know, doing tile work and whatever. So, um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was my favorite. And then the second property was just, relaxing just basically I thought I was in a penthouse <laughs> I thought that's what I felt like I was in a penthouse I had my own kitchen and sink and stove and refrigerator and had a pull-out sofa and my own bed and I had you know a, a back door access to back door and front door access. So, and there was security out there, which was quiet. You know, I didn't, there was no, uh, you know, there wasn't anything to be afraid of. A lot of people talk about Kingston as if it's this um, place to be cautious or overly cautious. You know, I mean, you should be cautious anywhere you go, but, um, yeah. So, but, you know, that wasn't my experience there to be afraid. So, but anyway, there was, there was, um, there was security there. So, but anyway, so, um, yeah, so I wanted, um, now the, uh, the purpose of this trip was for me to go and find out as much as I could in order to uh, get my thoughts together and, um, and start making a plan to relocate, to transition, and... Um, so right now, that's what I'm in the process of doing. And I think my number, right now, my number one priority um, is to get my personal life intact, in order. I want to free my mind of anything that's going to prohibit me from thinking clearly because this is a big step. You know, I'm moving not from neighborhood to neighborhood, but I'm moving from one country to another. And so, and I want to do this right. I don't want to make any major mistake. I don't want to make any mistakes. And so, so my number one priority is to clear my mind so I can have the clarity to be able to proceed in this transition smoothly.
and um, and and my history with Jamaica was well, you know, thirty years ago, you know, I visited Jamaica, and ever since then, I loved it. You know, I love it so, and I think what Jamaica has to offer. And what I connected with was that there, there's this air of freedom that I feel every time I go. And this was the third trip for me. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's always, there's this air of freedom, uh, the tropical weather, no winter. Of course, their winter is a rainy season and the temperatures might, you know, maybe fall a little bit, but it's still relatively a warm day. You know, there's, you know, there's always beachy weather, you know, so uh, it's just uh, a matter of, you know, dealing with the rain, but, and it is hurricane season and, uh, but for some reason, uh, through my research, there has been hurricanes that have went around Jamaica that has not touched Jamaica. And I've been told that Jamaica is blessed in that way. Now, yes, hurricanes have hit the coast of Jamaica and you know, but they have very few. I mean, the hurricanes can get to a certain point and then divert and go another direction, thereby totally passing up Jamaica. And I think it has something to do with the mountains and, I don't know, the elevation of the mountains and the water and the beach, the beach, the ocean. So anyway, the chances of hurricanes hitting Jamaica is, is very small, although they have been hit by hurricanes. Um, but yeah. And another reason for um, me loving Jamaica is that the people are so carefree. I mean, um, they're friendly, they're warm, they're, you know, they're so carefree and and they, they don't, they seem less stressed, um, less stressed than Americans. I mean, we're so uptight that, you know, um, you know, I think that's, I think our, you know, this hustle culture, and I'm going to have to say it again, this hustle culture stresses everybody out because society says that you have to have this in order to be successful. You have to have this size house. You have to have this type of car to be successful. And, and do you really need that? I mean, do you really need all of this stuff? You got to wear the designer clothes and have the, you know, the top of the line perfumes and colognes and sports, you know, these high priced tennis shoes or sneakers and all the gadgets and, you know, and you can live so much more simpler and be so much less stressful and, um, and so that's going to be my ticket. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna try my best to live as simple as I can. And, uh, and I want to try and not stress myself out about anything. I mean, nothing. And I want to live on Jamaica Island and die on Jamaica Island. And my granddaughter knows uh, what to do with my ashes after I'm cremated. So that's it.
That's how I want to go out. I want to live and die in Jamaica. So that's it. So, but anyway, uh, so I'm going to take the information that I, all the notes and stuff that I've written down, I've videotaped and, and uh, I've got other resources. I got in touch with Misty Memphis, who is admin for uh, Capital of Casual uh, Facebook group, and also Exodus Summit, which is a Facebook group, which uh, Stephanie Perry and Rashida Dow operates. And also uh, some YouTube channels, Sheeta's on the Loose, S-H-I-D-A, on the Loose, Stephanie Perry, she's been my inspiration. Also, Picky Girl Travels the World, also YouTube channel. And also, too, I want to throw in Throp. And that's T-H-R-O-P. Uh, I've been listening to him. He's offering some advice from a different angle. Uh, his focus is on uh, the growth of Negril. Uh, uh, the sign uh, has just been erected this past, well, it's just been unveiled this past Friday. And uh, so people are going, taking pictures of the Negril sign and taking, you know, you know, photo shoots and so forth. And uh, so, but his angle is more of the municipalities of Negril and about roads and, and bringing in more business and that sort of thing. So... Um, he's someone who I watch and, um, will continue to watch. So, uh, with that, um, I don't have anything else to talk about. Um, I will get back with you guys. I want to make my list out on what I want to, well, my number one priority is to get my personal life together. Seriously. Get my personal life together. And um, yeah, I want to be happy, peaceful, and, um, and if that means that I'm alone, then so be it. I can be happy by myself. So I'm not, uh, you know, look, I'm not making this move to um, well, I'm making this move to restore me. I'm making this move to live simple. I'm making this move to engage with people that are of the same mindset that I want to achieve. So I want to be happy. I want to be free. I want to be... Uh, I don't want to be uptight. I don't want to be, you know, I just want to be happy. So that's my main goal is to clear the space in my head so I can have clarity and uh, make this move. Okay, so until next time, I will have some, um, you know, some more information. So... Um, I want to say thank you for watching, subscribe, um, if, if you want to make a comment, make a comment, um, 
share. If you know somebody who's wanting to quit their toxic job, quit their toxic relationship, um, yeah, move abroad. share this video and all of my other videos so um yeah so peace out guys